Welcome to the Buker and Friends podcast, co-starring 10-year NFL veteran and Super Bowl champion, Will Blackman. Bending from the end zone, he throws, and it's a flight away, and it is picked off by Will Blackman, the former giant. Tim Dwight watches it hit, bounces, picks it up at the 10, slips a defender, fumble the football, it's up for grabs, it's covered in the end zone by Will Blackman for a Green Bay touchdown! And now, here is your host. Let's send it over to Rick Buecher. Rick Buecher. Welcome to another episode of Buecher and Blackman and Woodson. Subsidiary of Buecher and Friends, part of the United Wecast Network. Hold on, how you just add the man to the podcast? What is this? It's his second time hey, here. Yo, you know what it is? I was like, what that? Wait, what that? Hey. What, 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 what we got going on Now here, Charles man? is going to be asking for a check next. He's like, wait, 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 wait. We start adding my name. Where's the check? Uh, that's what I'm saying. We got to send him in. Hey, man. Hey. Yeah, yeah y'all, don't rope, y'all don't rope me right in, man. Hold up, man. <laughs> All right. So it's <laughs> Buker and Blackman with co-star or guest star. Also, joining. hey, there, there you go again. Costa, you know, right, Costa, I get checked too, right, man. Let me, let me try, let hey, me man, let me now start. he just went up, man. Good guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, next day, you know, you're gonna be saying partner. Yeah, oh, man, right. we all right. uh, part owner. Uh, Dude, there we go. Buker and Blackman, part of United We Cast Network. I'm Rick Buker. You can see me on FS1. You can read me at Bleacher Report, and you can follow me on Twitter at Rick Buker. He's Will Blackman. <laughs> NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. You can see him on the NFL Network. You can follow him on Twitter at Will Blackman. And we are joined by special guest, special appearance, no guarantees going forward or backward, the one, the only (laughs) Super Bowl champ, Charles Woodson. Charles, thanks so much for for joining us again. Will wanted to have you on, and, and we'll get right to it because of the words that Steve Smith had to say also former NFL vet, about Josh Rosen and the selection of Kyler Murray and the reaction of Josh Rosen. So we are, for for the sake of this podcast uh, and for our listeners, here are the comments by uh, Steve Smith about Josh Rosen and uh, the Arizona Cardinals selecting Kyler Murray number one. Six rounds in the next couple of days. Guys are getting replaced. You are replaceable. No one, they, they say in the league, the more you can do, it helps your opportunity. So now you're mad because they brought some competition in here, so you're going to try to take your ball? Well, first of all, son, it ain't your damn ball to take anyway. So you just keep playing with your phone, and you keep showing us what what the stigma of you and who you were was in, uh, at UCLA. Now you brought it to the professional level to show us you're still going to, when things don't go your way, you're going to cry in the corner. But guess what? They're going to ship your ass home somewhere else, and you can go cry and be their problem. Listen, yep. this is a man's game. Be a man and go against that man one-on-one. He gets 10 plays. You get 10 plays. Do your deal. Ain't nobody giving you nothing. Only thing you can get on this stage right now is a free ass whip, and everything else you got to work hard for. So, obviously, you've heard the comments. You heard them when they were first made. I'm going to turn it to you, Will, you and, yeah. and Charles. No, when I, when I first heard it, you know, especially on TV, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it too, with like guys of like your stature or, you know, I was on an NFL network and a lot of Hall of Famers, and I feel like sometimes they get up there and they just say the craziest thing sometimes because of who they are. And, you know, I, I love sometimes, you know, I love it, their analysis and I love their perspective of the game, but I thought this was like way out of line. You know, his, his first comment was, you know, if you draft you draft somebody, you got competition. And my whole take was, bro, if you if your team if you're a quarterback who just got drafted in the first round, and the next year they take a quarterback number one overall, that is not competition, bro. And I just thought he was, right. I thought he was way too out of line in regards to that. Which is interesting too. I looked on my Twitter, and everybody who was retweeting it was they were all you know reporters and analysts like this is gold this is great this is what whatever and then all the players they were like hold on man you can't he has no right to be angry because he didn't follow so he was like oh he's pouting he had every right to be pissed off you know so i was like you know what i'm so curious what someone like you would think about that situation right there no i think i think my first take was that it, it almost sounded personal you know, it was like he had a had a had a, a personal gripe against 
the young man, you know, like he knows him personally. And, 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 you know, that was like an opportunity to go in on him. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's Steve's mentality. I, I anyway, think, he I takes think, everything personal. Yeah. I mean, you know, which is cool, but I, I, I think I'm, I think I'm more in your camp than anything. I think there's, to me, I think there's, you know, a couple of different ways, I guess, to look at it. Cause I, I, I agree with a certain point, but then of course, part of it, I do not agree with. And I'm with you in, in the respect that, he was drafted 11th last year, I believe it was, you know, you know, to come in and compete for a position that he actually was Tenth, able to secure actually. a year ago. Okay, yep. And then um, here you are a year later, you get a new coach, and it comes out that this new coach says that Josh is our guy. And from my understanding, Josh has been going to the off-season workouts, been going to the facilities, uh, you, you've had to have, you know, run into the coach to, you know, start learning his offense. And he's looked you in the face. You've looked him in the face. And he said, you know, you're our guy. Like, you, you start to lean on the words that, that people tell you when they're sit, sitting there in your face. Like, you're our guy. So I'm sure he went about his business in that way. That, you know what, I'm the quarterback, you know, going going forward. And that's what I expect. Now, to Steve's point, if they would have come to Josh and said, hey, Josh, man, we love you, but you know what? We're bringing you some competition in. And it was presented that way to where you're drafting a guy and I got to compete my, for my position. I can get that. But that's not the way – I don't believe it was ever presented that way. It was presented that you're our guy and that's that. So for Josh Rosen, I mean, of course he's going to be upset. You know, I'm coming around the facilities every day expecting to be the guy – you know, going forward, and then, you know, a couple of minutes before draft, I'm not your guy anymore, man. Yeah, that's, that's to me, that's wrong. You'd be pissed off. You know, I, I think I would be pissed off. I think, it, you know, these teams that we always, you always hear us always say it's a business, and we get that. But, man, sometimes, man, some of these teams need to, you know, need to be the bigger man like they always want the players to be. Be the bigger man and say, hey, man, we're thinking about taking this guy number one and you know what? We're bringing him in here to possibly compete, uh, or we might have to trade you. <laughs> you know what right, I'm saying? Just be real. Like, no you, that, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it, it, so we, as a player, you always understand that. You know, the moment you get drafted, they're always looking for your replacement. We, we, we all understand. We always understand that. The year we signed you, shoot, we drafted like four DBs. <laughs> And, and, I and, remember and, that's not the, and that's not the first time it happened in, in my career. I mean, it happened oh. in Oakland. You know, they, they drafted Namdi. They drafted Fabian right. Washington, Stanford route. And I, I would hear people, you know, tell me, oh, man, they're drafting all these corners. They're trying to replace you. And my thought, of course, was always, man, I wouldn't care who they – they could draft 10 of them cats, man. They can't nobody come beat me out. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Which is what so Steve I, Smith I mean, was I saying. Wasn't worth, I, what I, I get that. I get that. But it was never, you know, it was never, like, publicly said from the Oakland Raiders, like, you're my guy. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, I didn't, it wasn't, the things that were coming out wasn't coming from the organization or the head coach, oh, you're my guy. I never worried about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that, 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 made me, that made me no difference in my case. But in the case of the quarterback, I mean, if you look at Roethlisberger a couple of years ago, he wasn't happy about them drafting the quarterback. And that was and that wasn't right. the number one pick. I mean, that to me it is it, the part it, it here. Wasn't even the number one pick. If they if they go it, get it, the guy number one, this isn't even a competition. Ain't no, there ain't no competition. None. Right. No. So, I, no. He, you know, no. Let's exactly. keep in mind too. Exactly. Let's keep in mind that Josh Rosen. He's he is on record. Is an article with Sports Illustrated saying that you know I'll just beat him out and Kyle Murray can be my backup. Like he said, he had no problem and and if there was a competition. You know, right. I would love I would have loved to competed if they have kept me. But I knew but I would have been kind of bum about it because I knew I wouldn't get a fair shake. Why do you guys think that Josh Rosen is such a lightning rod? He's such a polarizing figure because this I, I just feel as if for a guy who played on a team that wasn't very good and didn't have like good or bad, wasn't really a, a meaningful season. I feel as if we've seen a lot and said and heard about Josh Rosen. Like, why is there anything about him in particular? Even coming out of UCLA, it was all about 
his personality, whether he he could fit in, whether whether he was too you know outspoken, whatever. I just wonder if you guys have any any insight or any thoughts about why there's been so much made of him. But people don't people aren't blasé about him. They feel strongly one way or the other. Yeah, I think it all stems from college. I mean, I, I know I can't remember specifically you know everything that he said coming out of college, but. I mean, you used to hear about this kid in UCLA, you know, making waves about different comments he was making about, uh, I think, you know, like uh, eating at school or what what they were serving you at school and all of these different things. And so you you started hearing his name in college. And and I think that's where it all stems from because it wasn't anything that happened last year. I mean, he came in and they were on a bad team and that's that. I mean, there's plenty of quarterbacks on bad teams that don't get this much you know, conversation about him. So I think it all stems from college, and then all of a sudden you have, you know, this situation, and he's kind of back, you know, in the limelight with, you know, Arizona taking another guy one after they just took him first round last year. So he just ends up being, you know, in our conversation again. But, I mean, yeah, I I don't understand at this point what it's all about. Are the Dolphins a good fit for him? Um, I think so. it better be. Yeah. (laughs) I I think think it better be. I mean, I, I, I think... Yeah, look, man, and, and I feel like, man, when you look at a guy who, you know, got drafted as high as he can, and they took another guy the immediate year after, I don't I don't know a case where that's ever happened. I think immediately I think of I think of Tom Brady and I think about the fact that Tom Brady going, you know, 199th or whatever, and him having that chip on his shoulder with all the Brady 16, that whole nine, and him still, even after six championships, still has that chip on his shoulder. If Josh Rosen doesn't have the biggest chip on his shoulder in the history of football and Mm. come out every weekend prepared and have his team prepared because he's so driven by what just happened to him, then he ain't going to ever make it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? He's on on record in his press conference saying that that chip has grown so much he he might fall over. (laughs) Yeah. Which, yeah, well, don't let it get too heavy. You can't perform. Yeah, right. Don't let the chip break either. Now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, did Steve Smith? Did he break a code here, or he's is he just being Steve Smith? Like, where do you put what he said about another guy who plays think, the game that you guys play? I think he's being Steve Smith because when when he is on camera, he does perform. You know, just like Stephen A. Smith, he's mm-hmm. performing. You know, Stephen is a good guy. Same thing. I, I met Rob Parker the other day uh, from Fox, and he's he's a good dude, man. You know, and he's on he's when he's on camera, he's performing. Hmm. And I know Steve was performing. And sometimes you go up there, and, and you know, being on TV myself, you know, things just like flow through your mind. You know, and and you feed off the energy. People, like I said, the analysts and reporters, they love when Steve takes hot has hot takes like this. Right. So, I think in retrospect. I think he was just like. Well, I think that, well, I think there's a lot of truth in what he said. I just think it was misplaced in this instance. No, I I agree too. Like, okay, if the dude's coming, you know, in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they took now, if they took Kyler Murray, let's say you know thirtieth or maybe the first quarterback in the second round. Okay. Well, well, not even not even that. Let's just say Kyler Murray's gone. Let, let's say they take another quarterback in the third. Okay. That's a whole different. I'm that's cool a whole different that. animal, though. <laughs> That's a whole different ball game. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. So, so, so you take another guy, position. right? If you take another guy in the third, then that's that's legitimate. You know what? All right, you took another guy. That, all right, bring him in there. That that that's that's competition. Right. But that's if right. I was the tenth pick last year and you took a one at quarterback this year, that, that's no competition, man. Right, and how, that's what I'm saying. How we were, we were looking to trade you a long time ago. We just got to it after we right. took. We it. were waiting for our guy. How do you, like how do you, how do you not take Josh Rosen's side on this? That's why I was that's why I was like, you yeah. know, dumbfounded on this part. I guess the like the only situation I can see that was even remotely close was when Redskins took RG three and then later in the fourth they took Kirk and they were like they took two quarterbacks in this draft. Okay, right. And so you and so you know a lot of teams go with the best available. You know you 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 can always justify a pick by saying I'm going with the best available. Yeah. Here's the other part, though, in that you have you have a new coach who's already said years ago that Kyler Murray Murray was his guy. He was in high school. Understood. Understood. But if you're in the business, if you're in the NFL, 
aren't you on some level aware that when they change up, everything changes? I was the draft pick I, no, my, of exactly. the guy that was here before what? this guy. I'm you not get guaranteed your guy. anything. So, 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 but, but see, that's another, that's another argument because I absolutely agree. It, it's like a GM. You know, a GM comes in and all of a sudden there's a coach in place, shakes everything up, that coach right. is gone. Get your quarterback. So I, I certainly believe in the fact that Arizona gets a new coach, he has an idea of what he wants, and he has a guy that can run it the way he wants sitting at number one. You do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, man. I'm sorry, man, but you know what? My guy's going to be there at one, man. I got to go get the guy that's going to do it like I want it. Exactly. And I know that's never going to happen. That they are never going to do that. <laughs> None of those teams are ever going to do that, which is, you know, that's, that's the way it's done. I certainly have no problem with them taking them at one. So – if Josh Rosen had looked at this and said, I don't care what you tell me, and this is a big part of it, I think. You, you guys tell me if I'm wrong. It depends on what the Cardinals were telling him, right? Does that matter? If they were saying, hey, look, don't worry about it. You're our guy. We're not taking Kyler Murray number one. You know, you're our guy. And then they backtracked and they did something else. Is Josh Rosen justified in anything that he does? Or do you realize, you know what, I can't trust anything they tell me. I got to read the situation from myself and I know what the story is. So I'm gonna, I may come in and, and, and ha- do all the workouts, do everything they ask. But in the back of my mind, I know that I'm doing this for my preparation, for my season, wherever I might be, not necessarily here. That's, that's 100% on it. He's going into the situation saying, you know what? And he said, I, I just watched a little bit of his press conference. He can only control what he can control. And that's the, that's the most honest he could be. But with an understanding that, you know what, these people are probably looking in my face, man, and they're totally thinking about doing the total opposite of what they just told me. Right. Which, which one is, of which you is, ever have that experience? Which is messed up. Charles, did you ever? Where coach told you something? Where, where, uh-huh. they, where the team told you one thing, the coach told you one thing, and it proved to be absolutely – they went and did the opposite for whatever reason. Man, there's probably been a thousand instances. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, beast, I, honest, man. honestly, man, the coaches look. People love their job, man. That, that's you. that's as simple as I can put it. The they the they day, love their job, and they're gonna do what they gotta do to preserve their job. And they may tell you one thing, and you can go in and say, hey, man, you told me this. You can say, hey, man, it's dead. they'll say it's out of my hands. But like, well, wait a minute now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you got you to gotta take it with a grain of salt a lot of times, man. And uh, But but that does not mean you can't be upset about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like we, 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 we are allowed to be mad. Now, what you do after you get mad, now, that's, that's all on you. I mean, right. you can pout and, and let it, you know, you know, sink you into a hole and you can never get out of it. Or you can just go ahead and handle your business somewhere else and, and do something different. So, but yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's the way the game goes, so, man. So we, C-Y- CYA. <laughs> Cover your ass. <laughs> well, hey, but here's, here's my question. Hey, everybody, to, everybody's doing it. <laughs> everybody's doing here's my question to you guys. Oh, man. Go ahead. Because I see the same the same thing happened. Blake Griffin and I just had this conversation because of how the Clippers handled his trade to the Pistons. He said, I'm I wasn't mad that I got traded to Detroit. I'm mad the way it was handled because I heard he heard about it through back channels that it was happening. He went in and talked to the GM. The GM said, you know, started telling him, Hey, you know, you're such a great player. He goes, Look, I've been in the business nine years. Just give it to me straight. He goes, You'll be my first call. Give it to me straight. You'll, Dude, you'll be I my first call. So I can he, take it. So he walks out of the office, and a, and a buddy of his who told him that it was up at the beginning, he goes, they're finalizing the deal. And, and Blake laughed. He goes, I was, just in the, I was just in their office, and they didn't give me that. So he was just upset well, I just, the way it was I handled. Just, when I left the Green Bay Packers, I was in the meeting, um, in the meeting with Mike McCarthy going through you know, exit interviews. <laughs> And I had heard rumblings that the Packers weren't going to bring me back. You know, it, it comes out in the paper. Our beat writers know a lot, you know what I mean? So when you start hearing those things, you know, there's some truth to it. Yeah. And uh, I told Mike McCarthy, I said, Mike, I said, man, I don't know if y'all going to bring me back here or not. I said, but Mike, do not let me hear about this in the paper or in the news or on the television or wherever, man, before I know it first. 
Yeah. And what I give them credit, man, is before it, before it came out that I was going to be released, Mike and Ted, they called me. And that's all I could ask for. Yeah. Right. I but, had a, I had a all I situation, do. too, Rick, really quick. Oh, same thing. My, you know, my agent was at the Combine. At Combine, they do a lot of, you know, conversing with agents and, I mean, and GMs. They all talk. And same thing, Rublins came out that in Jacksonville that they – that I probably wouldn't make it to training camp. And so when I heard that, I called Dave Caldwell, too. And I was like, hey, Dave, you know, there was a rumbling saying that I might not make it to training camp. You know, if that's the case, you know, let me go now so I can find a new home. You know, I appreciate that. And don't hold on to me. And then, you know, you guys do something else. And then everyone start talking about in the papers. And sure enough, he called me into the office the next day. You know, we had a mature conversation and – you know, he did his thing before it went out, and same thing. I, I appreciate that. Like he just—he was just straight up with me about it. You know what I mean? Hmm. No doubt. So no doubt. What do you think it is that that doesn't? Because you mentioned Wood that you there's been a thousand situations where they weren't straight up with you. This is what I've always like. I feel but like you, I'm sure you dealt with it too, Rick, in in the business area right now. Oh. Oh. I'm telling you. Oh yeah. I'm dealing. I'm dealing. I dealt with it. If you you know, if you could go with somebody, and I was somewhere. And I mean, I was there all day. Yeah. And even spoke with the guy, and he could have just told me, like, "Hey, we're not gonna bring you back for our show." But instead, he I saw I was with him all day, and he told my agent the next day. My agent called me. I'm like, "Yo, I was just with this dude. <laughs> Your job. You're an executive. Your job is to tell the hard truth." Yes. So why is it? Do you think? They're scared that they don't. That they they're won't. Scared. They're scared of confrontation, or they they're scared to just be straight up. It says so much about them as a person, I believe. Yeah, I just I I feel as if the respect earned because you guys just said it, and actually I talked to a number of players about this same thing. You know, one of the issues, and I could see around training camp, which is somebody gets hurt, maybe they change their, you know, suddenly they have a spot that they didn't think they had, so they don't want to let you go earlier because. They're not 100 percent in terms of whether their their roster is set or not, but there's also the the fear that hey, if we tell a guy that he's on the block, that we're trying to move him, and then ultimately we don't we don't, his attitude towards us is going to change. And I think that that is a criticism or a unfair judgment of you as a professional. That if you knew that they were trying to move you and then they didn't move you, that you somehow wouldn't play as hard or you wouldn't be as committed to the team. And the bottom line is, as you guys have said, it's a business. I mean, you're still going to re- be rewarded based on how you play, right? So there's still a, a selfish element to, yeah, no, you know what? Okay, so you guys wanted to move me, but the bottom line is I still got to play hard because every time I'm on the field, I'm trying out for the other 31 teams anyway. I just, I just think most guys, of course, there's always exceptions to everything. But I think most guys can handle the fact that you can tell them straight up, man, what you're thinking. Then you're better prepared for it when it happens. But, but when it comes at you, when you get blindsided by something, and all of a sudden it comes from some back channel that, that, you, that you don't know about, and somebody runs up on you and says, hey, man, I heard you with that, that, that. You're like, wait a minute. I, I haven't heard that. You know what I'm saying? I'm around these people. I'm around these people every day. I, I see such and such every uh, Wednesday when I walk in the building. I see such and such every Saturday night at the team hotel. Man, nobody told me nothing. I'm walking around here, you know, on, on uh, thin ice, and I have no clue. And you might actually, you know, be contributing to the team. And you might be a good player. I mean, this this ain't all about it being some some guy who. Uh, doesn't play a whole lot or whatever. We talk, you know, there's a lot of guys, man, that go out there and sell their bodies out each and every game, you know, for a team. And then to all of a sudden, somebody who who's not really a part of the organization said, "Hey, I I, I hear you on a train block." Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm with these people every day. I go out here and, and I and I lay it all on the line every game, every practice. Somebody that I'm close with. On in the organization, or somebody that brought me in could have told me something. Could have told me anything. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, no question about yeah. it. <laughs> how how much? That's, 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 I mean, that's, how much do the teams ahead. rely on you guys to recruit players or to attract guys that they might be interested in? Do they ever talk to you about relationships that you have to try to Probably cultivate so guys or bring guys me, in who yeah. are free agents? 
I know you had to recruit Charles. We were in the Bay. You had to recruit people to get to the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I I used to try to recruit through the papers, man. I just every interview, man. I was just trying to, hey, man, get me somebody in here on the other side of Clay Matthews or something. Just bring me somebody in here. Right. That was that was my recruiting dish, man. I I used to try to shout it from the rooftops. No, nah, but uh, back to be straight up. I, I got this before we before we end before you end it, Rick. But I remember when I was on the Redskins, Scott McLuhan, he's the one that signed me there, and he told me he was like, listen, well, he said when I think. Your days are done," he said. "I will pull you into my office, and I will let you know. Hmm. I will tell you when it's over, and that either I release you or I'm gonna tell you that you know it's over. Like you should be done." And I and I looked at him like, yeah. "Okay, I respect it a lot too." Also, too, I know yeah. everyone says all kinds of crazy things about Bruce Allen, and yeah, I, I mean, I I have seen it before, whatever. However, when Bruce Allen released me, he actually gave me a call, and he said. Pick a restaurant. Wow. I was like, all right. You know, I, there was this place that I like to go to. And he met up with me. He said, I didn't want to send some scout to come call you and tell you to bring in your playbook. He said, I wanted to do it personally. So we met out and had dinner and we had a long conversation, you know. And, and um, obviously, I did not like the news at all. Sure. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But if there's anything, I do respect to the fact that he wanted to sit down with me face to face. And just say he was appreciative and that, you know, that everyone in the building respect me. Say, you know, say all the things that you really don't want to hear, but I appreciate the fact that he said it. So, Ain't no doubt. You can't do nothing but respect that. Yeah. Right. Do you think it was unique to you, Will? Or do you think I he... Thought it, I, thought it, I thought it was because that's the last thing I thought is that he wanted to have dinner. Cause I, no, I but I mean, really... do you think he did that for you? Do you think that was standard protocol or do you think that was because of... It was no a standard protocol. It was a standard protocol. I think he knew how upset I was, and that he was like, "Well, I don't want Will to come into the building because I know he's pissed off." Hmm. So let me just meet with him myself, and let's have dinner. So, man, I'll tell you what, I would have been like renting a yacht for Wood because I wouldn't want him coming into the building pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> like, for sure, if, I'm t- if they're taking hey, you out hey, to dinner, Wood, hey, man, I'm finding man, like. I just, uh, hey, I just- I just, hey, I just want to know, man. Let me know, and I can go my separate ways. I don't even want to come to your building no more. No, I didn't want to come to the building at all. He was like, "Let's have dinner." Like, right. Right. Who's right. paying? All right, I'll come back. All, right. all right, that does it for this episode of Buker and Blackman. And Woodson, I don't do it. Go ahead. Why not? <laughs> we appreciate that Charles Woodson once again joined us. Uh, keep in mind, wherever you get your iTunes, please leave us a rating and a comment, if you will. Uh, we have about 10, I think, uh, reviews that we need before we give away our next prize. Uh, but we always appreciate hearing from you. In the meantime, in my in the next podcast, it will be Buker and Friends. And I believe one of my conversations with Blake Griffin will be part of that podcast so look for that next but in the meantime wood as always man it's uh we appreciate you joining us appreciate the insight and uh hopefully we'll get to do this again uh <laughs> and and then we'll work on it I, I, don't, I don't got no, i don't got no choice i'm already co-star man i got a choice bro. <laughs> that's <Right>. bb's <laughs> give me love <laughs> give me love all right that's all it right, man. in the meantime right, as yeah. always thanks for listening